Hey, out there in comic book land, it's a new year. Time for a new episode of Ask Chuck Dixon, episode 91. Happy 2022 to all of you. I hope it's better than last year and the year before. Please, dear God, have mercy on us. Okay, Ablo Show. I love this question, Ablo. Um, I hope this finds you well. This might be a dumb question. It's not. But have you ever thought about doing a fantasy type character like a Conan or an Elric type character in a pre-colonial Africa type setting? I'm from South Africa and so I may be a little biased, but I feel pre-colonial Africa is underused as a fantasy setting. Fantasy, swords and sorcery, deviltry and stuff like that of Robert E. Howard always intrigued me and I always felt sword and sorcery went great with the more slob hero. Thanks for the new phrase, by the way. Gritty, pulpy, revenge-like tales. The type of stuff I always thought you did great. Your take, take on Frank is always fun. Um, this is such an awesome question, and it's one I've asked myself over and over and over again. Um, we're seeing now, uh, and it's all due to this sort of uh, woke period in entertainment, uh, we're seeing a lot of gender and race swapping of characters and, and generally here in the United States when they race swap a character they they replace a white character with a um, African-American if you notice they never replace an Asian or, <laughs> or Native American character with an African-American it's always a white character and I don't know what the point of that is um, in some cases it, it's okay, you know, uh, the equalizer with Denzel Washington, I thought was great. Hey, it's Denzel. I mean, Denzel's going to play Macbeth. That's fine with me because Shakespeare is malleable that way. So I, I, I don't care. It's, you know, it, it, Shakespeare's plays aren't historical dramas. They're not historical recreations. So I, I, I feel it's okay to play with them. But... Um, but the thing that bothers me about it is that replacing a white character with an African-American character, um, I don't care about cultural appropriation. That's, that's nonsense. Uh, what does concern me is, aren't there any interesting African-American characters on their own? Aren't there any characters who uh, build upon that heritage, that build upon that history? Um, in, a, in a positive way. I mean, we see a lot of negative stories. If they do a, a historical story from an African-American perspective, it always has to be, uh, it always has to deal with racism in some way, uh, as if that's the only thing that matters in African-American history. And it's not. It's not. Because African-Americans are part of the American story. And uh, they shouldn't be represented simply as, you know, a platform for discussing racial disparity or, or the history of racism in America, as if America were unique. <laughs> the existence of racism only occurred here. Uh, so, um, and I think it, it, it demeans that heritage. The same for Africa, pre-colonial Africa. Talk about a rich tapestry. Talk about true diversity. Um, you've got a continent. You know, it, it's, a, it's a pretty big place. And many of its peoples were separated by either war or terrain or geographical distance. Uh, in Central Africa, you have tribes that rose up with entirely different cultures than the tribe 20 miles down the river different language, different gods, different cultures. So you've got this, this, um, this quilt of mythology and history and heroes and villains to draw from. And my only question is, why don't they do it? I mean, even, even Lion King is Hamlet rewritten. I mean, there's not an African story. There's, I can't believe that. Would, would I ever do this? No, I, 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 I wouldn't. Um, have an interest. I mean, I think anybody should be able to write anything, but if someone was going to write a uh, an African version of Conan, I, I would prefer it was an African, personally, uh, because I would want their perspective on this. 
uh, you know, similarly, you know, if you were to write a, an epic story of the, of the Monkey King, you, you would want a, a Chinese person to write it. Uh, I wouldn't want to see a movie of Musashi Miyamoto, you know, written by a white guy. You know, I, some of these things are so bound to culture. I prefer to see what a person of that culture thinks of it. Personally, Sergio Cariello and I have talked for years about a, a Conan-type character set in uh, pre-colonial America. Uh, I, I mean, like, you know, 40,000 years ago uh, with, with Native American characters uh, in, in with, you know, in a Neolithic setting, nomadic Neolithic setting, with woolly mammoths and dire wolves and giant beavers and all the rest. Um, but if you understand what I'm saying is it, it, by... By, by casting black African-American, uh, recasting white characters as black or African-American is demeaning because it implies that they don't have a culture of their own. And it's just so wrong. It's just so wrong. But I, I see this all over the place. I mean, we see the same historical events told over and over and over again in movies as if no other historical event existed. As if they're, you know, they don't mine history uh, for all of the interesting uh, things they can do. They're constantly revisiting, you know, the Trojan War. You know, they're constantly revisiting King Arthur, which didn't even exist. Um, you know, as much as I like Vikings, they're constantly making things about Vikings. You know, there's, there's other eras to talk about. I, I, I was so pleased when Netflix did a, uh, um, a really good series about the Romans in, in ancient Germany. In, uh, the, the, the Battle of the Teutonberg Forest. At least it was something we hadn't seen before. Uh, so, I, you know, like I said, you know, Africa has a rich heritage. It also has an enormous population of possible entertainment consumers. And you can say, oh, well, Black Panther. But Black Panther was all made up. It was all made up by two white guys. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, Wakanda doesn't exist. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of... Um, a pastiche of African culture. It, it's not real. It's it's a lot of stereotypes and cliches uh, thrown together. Um, you know, powerfully and successfully. But that's just the thing, isn't it? Uh, Black Panther was so enormously successful across a wide audience. I mean, the movie made a lot of money. And uh, so it's obvious that the public would be accepting of a uh, pre-colonial African Conan type story. I, I certainly think so. I certainly would watch it. I mean, just the vistas alone. I mean, you live in South Africa, you know, you've got some amazing landscapes there. Just absolutely spectacular stuff to set historical fantasy against. Um, so yeah, why not? But you know, it just, it just, it just really annoys me when they feel this need I guess, virtue signaling or whatever, you know, to misrepresent history in this way. And, and again, it, it's, it's sort of a hollowing out or, or um, ignoring or neglecting the fact that, that Africans and African-Americans had, had this incredible history, you know, that, I don't know. Yeah, but I want to, I, I would love to see a black coat in. I, I don't want to see a, a white Chaka Zulu though. <laughs> I need your help to spread the word. Uh, if you enjoy this channel, you know, share it with a friend, tell a friend, post about it on social media, you know, increase my reach.